Rocky. Shh. We have a look at our learning intention. We're still talking about probability. Um, we want to be able to calculate relative frequencies. And um, what we said about this would be, um, it would be the probability of experimental events. And we looked at how experimental and um, theoretical probabilities would be, um, what, what may be different, okay, at times. And if we do that experiment, more often then we would find that our um, what our probability would go closer and closer to our theoretical probability. Okay, and these are our success criteria. This is from the same section of your textbook. And as I've told you last time, it's quite a long one. And that's why I've um, separated them into two. It works out well anyway, because the last time we talked about two-way tables and this time it would be another um, display, which we've introduced last lesson anyway, um, which would be the Venn diagram, All right? So describe what 10 colored cubes you would put in a bag so that the probability of selecting a red one is high, but not certain. Um, so 10 colored cubes. So it doesn't have to be, does it have to be 10 different colors? Or as long as that cube would be, would have any color at all. Okay. So that's probably my hint. Option two, this time you want to describe what 10 colored cubes you would put in a bag so that the probability of selecting a red one is two fifths. And then when you have your answer, you're free to unmute yourself or type on the chat how many would be of this color, how many of that color etc cetera, etc cetera. so we've got five blue let's draw that i don't like drawing sorry would that be the bag or the cube ah, see i was already thinking about marbles why weren't you telling me that they were cubes okay <laughs> just imagine they're cubes okay so you've got is this what we're looking for? Anyone? Would this give us a high chance of getting a red? Equal, so that would be an equal chance, yes. So it wouldn't be a high chance, but it would be an equal chance for you to be able to get a red one. Refine this answer. How would you refine this answer? more of the red so if i change one of these as red and i'm sorry for not drawing a cube <laughs> see you can make mistakes so you've got there would you consider this as a high high chance already some might probably say well maybe if i've got more of them as red just like this one here yeah then I would say that's um, a high chance, yeah? And you don't have to have, what, all blue um, for, your, for your other cubes. You can actually have other colors. I don't like that color. Can you see it? Yeah, that's green, right? Or one would be yellow or, or all of them would be of the same color, okay? Yes? How about if it's two fifths? Something that's more exact. What would the bag look like? Change some reds. Yes, we need to change some reds into a different color. How many reds would I need to change? Three would need to be changed. So I change these here, right? And change it to maybe pink, another pink. And what's your favorite color? Purple. Yay, there you are, right? So this one would now have a two out of five. Next, who was challenged um, from that warm up, or was it too easy? Same in between. Okay, others still thinking? <laughs> All right, it was in between. 
All right, so let's have a look at um, our Venn diagram today. So we've got new words again today. So that's why I told you um, this topic. With, it's exciting and it's good and, um, you know, it's fun when it was in year seven and eight. But when you go to year nine and ten, you've got heaps of new words that you'd be talking about, heaps of new symbols. Um, just like when you say mutually exclusive events, A or B, when you say mutually exclusive, on the Venn diagram, it looks like that. Two disjoint sets, right? When you have mutually exclusive, then those are um, sets. So we said that when you have a set, you um, draw it with circles and the rectangular one would be what you call your universal set. And they've thought of an annoying symbol to write the universal set. Most of the time in all the other parts of the world, we actually just use the scripted U for universal set, which makes sense, right? Anyway, we want to be different. So um, A and B, as I've said last time, you can write down or name the set um, outside or inside. Okay, whichever space or whichever you'd probably be able to like remember and name them. Okay, so these are two mutually exclusive events. They are what you call your disjoint sets because they don't have anything in common. All right, so they're mutually exclusive because they've said, you, what's yours, it's yours. What's mine, it's mine. Okay, that's mutually exclusive. We've agreed that this element here, that's yours. We've agreed that this element here would be mine, okay? But when we have, um, but most of the time, those sets would probably have a, um, an intersection, okay? Or what you call your overlap. So intersecting sets. I'm bothered by the next page. But I'll just try to ignore that intersecting sets. So you've got there um, again your universal set, and you've got that overlapping with the other. All right. What that means is that you have got some of those elements that would belong both in A and also in B. All right. Um, just like probably, can't think of anything now. <laughs> just like probably when you have, um, well, we could probably say with the mutually exclusive ones, you could say the group of year 10 students, the group of year nine students, okay? So none of those year nines can be considered as year tens and therefore they're mutually exclusive events. They're disjoint sets, right? But when you say intersecting sets, one, um, when you have the group um, E10 students, right, you can have what another group of students who would probably be what what groups do we have at school um, in the debating th team, right? So A could be the group of U10 students, and B could be the group of sh of um, the students who are in the debating team, right? So some of them would be coming from the U10s. Right, but some of those people who would be in the debating team wouldn't be year tens. They can be seven, year eight, year nine, right? But there would be some that would be both year ten and also in the debating team. Does that make sense? When we've got two sets which are mutually exclusive, for us to be able to figure out, uh, so again, this time we've got heaps of symbols now. When we have this symbol here, that's what you call the union. This one here, the inverted U, would be what you call your intersection, okay? So the one I shaded here would be what you call your intersection. So that would be your A intersection B, okay? How do I draw the a union B, when you have this instead, when everything there is considered, 
then you would now have what you call your A union B. Say that when you have the A union B, that is the OR statement. But when you have the intersection, that is the AND statement, okay? When you have your intersection, that element needs to be both in A and also in B, okay? But when you have um, an element um, that would be an A union B, it can just be a year 10 student or it could be a student in the debating team, okay? So it would be an OR statement. Does that make sense? If you have the probability of A union B, so again, we're now writing down some important note, um, notations here. That's how you, uh, the, how you read this is probability of A union B equal to probability of A plus probability of B, okay? Which makes sense because what you actually want to do would be to get all the probability of A and also the probability of B, right? Um, and there isn't any problem with the intersection here. So you don't have to minus anything. Unlike if they are intersecting sets, then your formula would be a bit different. You would say that when you have the probability of A union B, you would have the probability of A plus probability of B. I don't know what's happening. But you have to minus the intersection, A intersection B. Okay, so if we say the probability of A union B, if I color this in or shade that in, right? So that's my, my A. But then if I color B, um, I would have this. And what happened there? I doubled up something. What did I double up? I doubled up with this bit here. Yeah? So for you to not double up anything there, you don't want, you just want to count them once then you would have to minus that intersection, okay? Yeah, so those are just the things that you'd probably need to think about. And when you think about them, just maybe imagine those Venn diagrams there, okay? Again, those visuals, those displays um, would probably be able to help you understand better, okay? Now, let's have a look at um, some examples here. It says, a card is drawn from a pack of 52 playing cards. What is the probability that the card is, heart, is a heart or a club? Do we know um, a deck of cards? Have we played the normal deck of cards? Do we, do we know how many cards there are? Anyone? Let's probably revise. All right. Now, if we've got 52 there and we've got four suits, 52 divided by four, then that means we've got for each of the suits, we have 13 of them. When you have a heart or a club, are they mutually exclusive or are they um, intersecting events? Can a card be both heart and at the same time, a club? No, right? So there wouldn't be any um, card that would be both heart and also at the same time a club and therefore they are mutually exclusive. So for us to figure out um, what is the probability that the card is a heart or a club, so or would be union, so we're looking for the probability of A union B. We have probability of A plus the probability of B. Okay, yes. So what's the probability of you getting a heart? 13, so you can say it's 13 out of 52. 
right? And how about the probability of you getting clubs? 13 as well. So that's 13 out of 52. Or you can actually say, because it's one out of four suits, then that's actually um, simplified to a quarter. And you could say that's two quarters, which is simply a half. Yeah. So that's for the first one. Yes, that's right. So each of those probability would be a quarter. If you add them together, you get a half. Right. How about if we take a break? And then we'll be back in 10 minutes. Yeah, I'll put a timer on. You can stretch. Thank you. All right, so we'll have a look at the next example. It says there a die is rolled, determine um, the probability of an odd number. So that one would be, so when you have the um, die, the sample space, again, if you've forgotten how we write sample space, that's with the curly brackets, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And for us to find the probability of an odd number, we know that there would be three of them. It's one, three, and five. And therefore that's three out of six, which is a half, all right? When we have the probability of a number less than four, a number that's less than four. So you can um, do or write down those shortcut instead of um, writing, writing it down just like the one in the textbook, right? So you can use those symbols less than four. Then we know they would be one, two, three. Would I say four is included if it's less than four? So four would not be included because it would be equal to four, right? If it would have that um, less than or equal to, then you have four out of six, but because you only want the numbers that are less than four, then there are only one, two, and three, right? These numbers here, and therefore that's three out of six, which is again, one half, yeah? So for us to figure out what would be the probability of an odd number and also, uh, or a number less than four, then again, if it's an or statement, we want to have um, probability of A, um, union B, and because they would not be mutually exclusive um, because some of the odd numbers, just like what, one and three, right? Those are numbers that would be less than four. So you could say that it's the probability of odd, or maybe just say A is odd and B is less than four. Okay, so we can just use that probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. Yeah, so probability of A is one half plus one half, but we need to minus their intersection. How many of those numbers are both um, less than four and also odd, they are one and three, yeah? Why is that my color? Right, so there would be two out of six and therefore what's two out of six? It's one, ooh, it's one third, right? So if we've got half plus half, that's one minus one third, then you get a number that's two thirds. And therefore you have probability of um, getting an odd or a number less than four would be two thirds, okay? So it's not just adding the probability of A and the probability of B, All right? Next, what does example seven say? It says, given the probability of A 0 0.6, um, the probability of B equal to 0 0.4, and the probability of A union B is 0 0.9, use the addition law of probability to calculate um, the value of probability of A intersection B. So since probability of A union B is not a null set, when you say null set, it's empty or um, it's zero, right? Since the probability is not zero, then that means they are not mutually exclusive events. They are overlapping 
events, right? So what we can use would be the same formula as what we um, used here, which is that, yeah? And say, we've got the probability of A union B, that's equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersection B, yeah? And now we replace what we're given. We are given that the probability of A is 0.6. So let's replace that. The probability of B is 0.4. So let's replace that. And then the probability of A union B is 0.9, yeah? And what we're looking for is the probability of A intersection B, right? So just like when we were solving equations, right? We want the probability of A intersection B by itself. So we can simplify 0 0.6 and 0 0.4. What's 0 0.6 plus 0 0.4? That's equal to one minus the probability of A intersection B, right? Now, what did you minus from one to get 0 0.9? You would say it's what? Probability of A intersection B would be equal to 0 0.9. One. Yeah, because one minus 0 0.1 gives you 0 0.9. Okay, so that's example seven. Now that's A, we've got B. Draw a Venn diagram to represent the universal set. All right, so we've got, we know that they would need to be overlapping sets. You've got um, I think like how it's drawn. <laughs> anyway, so that's your A, that's your B there. What we know now is that the intersection would be 0 0.1. So when you want to write down the probability and you're um, what, using Venn diagrams, the first thing you want to put in would be your intersection. Okay, so the one inside would be 0 0.1. Yeah, now it said that the probability of A is 0 0.6, correct? So you're saying that this whole thing here is 0 0.6, yeah? But this bit here is already 0 0.1. So what's the remaining if the whole thing is 0 0.6? It would have to be, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, because 0 0.5 plus 0 0.1 would give you 0 0.6, which is what we want from here, yeah? How about the probability of B? Probability of B um, would be uh, 0 0.4, right? But this bit here is already 0 0.1. So outside the intersection, it would have to be 0 0.3, yeah? Now, outside the A union B, right, if you add all of them together, or when the problem says that the union would be 0 0.9, right, the one outside would be 0 0.1, yeah? So that's, those are the things that you'd probably want to put in on your Venn diagram. Okay, all those information. And if you add all of them together, as what we said last time, the, the range of probability would have to go from zero to one. Yeah, so now we've got, um, what? That's our Venn diagram, what's our question? Calculate the probability, um, let me use blue, uh, uh, probability of, what, A intersection B prime or dash or complement of B, yeah? So what does that mean? We want those that um, are in A, right? Which is also in B prime or which is not in B. So this one here means not in B, right? So we want to find the intersection of them. So if we 
shade what is A, this is A, yeah? If we have the intersection of what's not B, um, let's pick that one. Not B would be everything that's outside B. Yeah. So that one that I'm shading there is outside B. It's everything outside B. Yeah. But what would be the intersection? We want something that's in A, also something that's not in B. And that would be this bit here. Not including that intersection, right? And what would be the value of that? It's 0 0.5. Okay. Yes. Correct. It's a lot to chew, but you'll get the hang of it. Okay. Draw a Venn diagram representing the relationship between the following sets. Show the position of all the elements in the Venn diagram. All right, so you've got your universal set as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 1 to 20. Okay, now what you want to do here is not to write just like um, what we what we've done here, these, the numbers that we put here are not the elements, but the numbers we put here would be the probability. On this second um, example, or in this in example eight, um, what we have here or what we need to draw or put inside the um, set would be the actual elements, okay? What's in that group, okay? What would be the numbers that belong in that group? Now, the universal set, the one that um, encompasses everything, let me just draw um, those two. And there would be overlaps. Do we have overlaps? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. The other ones, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. So there's 18 and also, what else? 12, that would be both. And six, so it would be both in A and B, and therefore we know that they are um, what? Joint sets, yeah? Or intersecting sets, overlapping sets, yeah? So we want to draw our universal set. We say this is A, that's set B, right? We want to firstly, um, what, write down um, the ones that are in both A and in B, right? And what were they? They would be 18, also 12, let me know if I miss out any, and then six, yeah? Now, if you look at A, now you can write down, it's three, six, six is already there, nine, 12 is already there, 15, and then 18 is already there. And you can check your um, working by counting the elements of A. You have one, two, three, four, five, six. You count the number of elements that you've drawn here as well, okay? And then you go on to the B. You write two, it's not there. So we put it here, four, six is there, eight, 10, 12 is there, 14, um, 16 is not there. 18 is there, and lastly, you've got 20 there, okay? Now, since your universal set would be numbers from one to 20, then everything that's, that you haven't written, you have to put it outside, okay? So then you've got one, is not there, two, three, four, it's like a roll call, uh, four, five, five is not there, six, seven, or seven, seven's not there, Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 is there, 13 is not there, um, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 is not there, 18, 19, and then 20 is there, 
okay? Um, what do we want? We want to find the probability of A. The probability of A would be you count how many elements you have there. There's six out of 20. And then you just simplify. What's six out of 20 equal to? That's three out of 10, all right? So the idea there would be, I guess the challenge there would be to actually draw the Venn diagram and then everything else would probably follow smoothly because you just need to count how many there are and how many would be the total, All right? So the probability of B, um, there were how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So that's 10 out of um, 20 and therefore that's one over two, okay? And you can do the rest of those exercises and keeping in mind that when you have A prime, it's something that's outside of A and B prime would be something that's outside of B, okay? Um, and maybe you could have a look at um, example nine as an extension, but I want you to do maybe a few questions for now. All right, so you might want to just try first the novice questions. Those are the questions that we didn't um, attempt last lesson, okay? Because what we focused on last lesson was the two-way table and this time it's Venn diagrams, okay? I'd probably start with questions five and six for today. If those are the questions that you can finish um, until the um, end of the lesson, that's fine, okay? Okay, I'll see you next week, all right? And if you've got any questions, email me, message me, or drop them in, in our um, live document. Okay, see you all. Come on, Rocky, let's go.